Howdy freeze dryers, welcome back to the Live Life Simple Kitchen. Today we're gonna revisit a couple of older videos. We're gonna put an autumn twist on the coffee video as well as our freeze dried uh, alternative milks video. Because today we're gonna make a freeze dried pumpkin spice coffee creamer. If you wanna check out the coffee video, the alternative milks video, or some of the heavy whipping cream, half and half, uh, the heavier dairy cream type videos, I'll put a link down in the description for that. You can check those videos out later. We're only gonna need a few ingredients. We're gonna need some pumpkin puree, we're going to need a little bit of vanilla extract, or even better than that, a vanilla cream stevia sweetener would work even better. Uh, we're gonna need a little bit of pumpkin spice. If you don't have any of that, I'm gonna show you how to make this, it's real simple. And then last, we just need a little bit of oat milk. Why oat milk? Because I freeze dried every kind of milk there is, including dairy milk, and I think that oat milk has the best chance of very long-term storage. Every other kind of milk is gonna have some kind of fat in it or oil or something that's just not going to last a very long time. And oat milk is still gonna provide that same kind of texture as cow's milk or even a cream or something like that. And if you wanted to rehydrate with something other than water, uh, so you have the oat milk in there, you could rehydrate with milk, you could rehydrate with uh, heavy whipping cream, which we will experiment with a little bit later in the video. So let's get started on our creamer. And we are gonna start with three quarters of a cup of this pumpkin pure you're gonna to want to go into a larger pot or a larger pan that will hold quite a bit. Uh, I'm gonna actually make this recipe so it will fit a medium freeze dryer tray so you can expect about six cups of finished product and you could probably, uh, you could actually, if you're making this in a big batch, you could probably squeeze enough to do all four medium trays. And then to our pumpkin puree, we're gonna add six cups of oat milk which for this Chobani brand was the exact size of this carton. And then to sweeten this up a little bit, we want three quarters of a teaspoon of this stevia sweetener, or you can use vanilla extract as well. And then our final ingredient, we just want three teaspoons of pumpkin spice or pumpkin pie spice. And this is something very simple that you can make if you don't have pumpkin pie spice. All it is is cinnamon, nutmeg, and some ground ginger. And an easy way to make this is just two parts cinnamon and then equal parts nutmeg and ginger. And that's it for ingredients. Then you're just gonna cook this on medium heat. You're really just trying to heat this all the way through. And you wanna stir this frequently through that five to seven minutes. We want this all the way heated through. And we want a nice smooth texture that you're used to for coffee creamer. And while we're heating that, I'm gonna go ahead and line a tray with parchment or silicone. Highly recommended. Uh, if you didn't catch the video last week with the applesauce, uh, you can definitely see why parchment and silicone comes in handy with certain things. I have done uh, the alternative milks like oat milk without parchment before and it sticks to the bottom of the pan and stuff like that just drives me nuts because it just seems like such a waste of product, especially after you've put the work in to freeze dry. The parchment, it's inexpensive for what it is and it, it just saves a lot of cleaning, it saves a lot of wasted food and just wasted efforts really in general. So be careful not to burn this creamer to the bottom of the pan. It can be very easy to do. And I also wanna say, I know it seems kinda of counterintuitive just to have a big, a big mess of stuff going right under the parchment, but this will, uh, this will be no problems at all when it's all done. So I am gonna put dividers in because I want these to be single serving. I also wanna point out, I really like the freeze drying recipes that I give to you to be very simple and versatile and just a, an easy way that you can make them your own. If you want a very sweet creamer, you can add more sweetener. If you want it a little more spicy, add more spices or different spices. Mine is a very basic, simple recipe, uh, as most of my recipes are. Normally when you're making this recipe, you wanna let it cool down to room temperature. Um, I'm assuming that that would change the texture, probably thicken it up a little bit. Uh, but since we're freeze drying, it really shouldn't matter and it's, it's gonna cool off to room temperature a lot faster anyway, right when you put it into the freeze dryer or if you put it in the deep freeze. Okay, so this would definitely be easier to pour into the trays and put them into the deep freeze. It's gonna reduce messes and whatnot. Today I'm gonna take one for the team for everyone just and try and do a balancing act on the way to the freeze dryer. I also wanna show you how much thicker 
This is now that it has set for a little bit and gotten to room temperature. It's just like the traditional creamer that you would expect. And everyone takes their coffee a little different. It's good. But if you wanted to add more sweetener, I like maple syrup in my coffee. Some it's kind of weird for some people. I love it. And this will also make an awesome holiday gift for whichever holiday you want to give it for. Let's get a weight on these before we actually go into the freeze dryer and then we know how much water to add into them to get them back to where they need to be. This one's uh, 2,044 grams. This one is 2110. You notice a little bit of a color difference. I did add a little bit more spice to this one just to see if I liked it better that way. We'll just see what it, what it rehydrates like. And I guess one of the perks to my job, if you want to call it that, is that I get to drink coffee and eat food while doing it. So if you like what we're doing here, please let us know, give us a thumbs up. It really helps with the algorithm. It helps get our videos out to people that like to freeze dry or might be interested in freeze drying. Always, always, always make sure that you subscribe if you have not already and click the bell. That'll send you a notification every time we put a video out for us. That's uh, every Sunday at 8 a.m. for five years now. All right, well, we got those in there with minimal spillage. Uh, and I, you'll notice that I also only did two trays because I like pumpkin, I just don't like it that much where I need that much. <laughs> and I really just wanna make sure that this is gonna be something that I want to uh, keep doing and something that I don't need to make tweaks to. But if I did need to make tweaks, I would do that in the freeze drying cookbook. That's our new cookbook. This recipe will be in there as well as about 170 other recipes in there as of the time of this recording. And that is the beauty of having an e-cookbook is it can be changed, modified as things change. If, if we can figure out a better formula for things, a better recipe, uh, new technologies, you name it, we can change them real time. If anyone ever has suggestions or recipes, I'd love to try them. I'd love to hear about them. You can comment on this video. You can send us a message to freezedryingcookbook at gmail.com or you can always reach out on our Facebook or MeWe groups. It's just retired at 40s. Freeze drying group, there's all kinds of freeze drying information in there, freeze drying users. Uh, experts at this point, I would say 10 and tens of thousands of members, including myself. And you can also use this magnifying glass. You can search all of those old threads and members and uh, recipes and anything you can think of, you name it, it's on there. And if you're ready to pull the trigger on a freeze dryer, please consider using our affiliate link. It can be found below in the description. That sends us a small commission as a thanks from the company uh, for giving you the information and the knowledge uh, to go there ready to purchase. And what we do with that commission is put it back into the freeze drying groups. We do giveaways. It helps us provide YouTube content and it also helps us develop products for freezedryingsupplies.com where we're just trying to streamline the whole freeze drying process from start to finish. We have accessories and gadgets and parchment paper and just things that are just gonna make you, the whole freeze drying process that much easier. And the easier and better freeze drying is, the better the community gets and uh, we just continue to grow every day. But let's get back to our freeze dried pumpkin spice creamer. Well, that took 31 hours and 20 minutes and we ended up at 19.58 kilowatt hours. And it smells really good as you open up the freeze dryer door, but this looks, this looks like it's gonna work great. Let's get a weight on these. And our first batch ended up at 974 grams. The second batch ended up at 972 grams. So to figure out how much water we need to put in, you just need to take the beginning weight minus the ending weight. That'll give you how much water you need to put in. And then if you use the 40 portion dividers, you just divide that by 40 and that will give you the amount of water that needs to go back in here. And the dividers did a nice job of cutting these into cubes. I'm gonna put our test sample in a ball jar and just go ahead and put it in the Avid Armor and we're gonna vacuum seal that. And the rest of these I'm gonna throw into some Mylar. I'll probably do a half size of my Mylar and then I'm gonna write my rehydration method on here and that's on there. And some of our little individual packets like we've made for the condiments and stuff would work really slick for this if you were traveling or something.
All right, let's get caffeinated. I'm gonna do this four different ways. I think there's a lot of opportunity to do this lots and lots of different ways. Maybe this will just give you an idea or maybe you wanna try the way that I'm doing. Uh, so we used oat milk, it, we could have used uh, cow's milk, we could have used whole milk, it probably would have done just as good as the oat milk. I kinda of like oat milk in the coffee because it's more, it has more of the, the creamer taste that I like. Uh, I'm gonna rehydrate though with some heavy whipping cream. I'm gonna do one with just water so we can get it back to the original texture. I'm also gonna do one with coconut cream which will give it a nice uh, smooth kind of coconut flavor as well. And then I'm also gonna just take one of the cubes and drop it straight into the coffee. So let's try this just straight into the coffee first. Um, I vacuum sealed this ball jar. So we're gonna go right in and it should just dissolve completely really fast. You can see it's just soaking up that coffee right away. I'm gonna hit it with a frother. And this one obviously is going to be a lot more concentrated than the others. It's definitely stronger, but it gives you just a little bit of the pumpkin spice flavor if you like your coffee black and not really a lot of frills and stuff in it. This would be a good one for you. And I figured out from weighing my trays before and after, then dividing it by 40 since there were 40 portions, that we need about 27 or 28 grams of uh, water or liquid to go back into this to make it the way that it was before. And that equals out to just about an eighth of a cup of water. And that definitely helps bring out the pumpkin flavor. I took a little taste test of this. Let's add it to our coffee. And that's just a little bit smoother. You wouldn't think it would make much of a difference between just dropping it in and adding the water, but it does actually bring more of the creamer flavor out. Uh, next, I wanna try the one that we've all been waiting for, the heavy whipping cream, which we know does not do really great in the freeze dryer, uh, especially if you're doing long term, just because it's a, it's a high fat cream. So I went ahead and measured out 27 grams of whipping cream also. It's, it's really not a whole lot heavier than the water, and it's a little bit less than an eighth of a cup like the water was. And what's interesting is this is not soaking in as fast because the cream is so much heavier, but I have a feeling that once we get this all dissolved, we're gonna have a really nice creamer. So you can see quite a bit thicker. In fact, I'm gonna have to use a spoon, I think, to get it into the coffee. And that whipped up really nice. That has a nice texture to it. I can't wait to give this one a try. And before I do, I wanna show you the difference. This was our first one with just dropping it in. This was our rehydrated version with water. This is the heavy whipping cream and then straight black. So pretty big difference between all of those. Well, no surprise, this one is nice and smooth. Let's try our coconut cream. So for our coconut cream, we're not really gonna be able to rehydrate these together, but we can rehydrate them in the coffee. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do about a, a tablespoon of coconut cream. If you don't wanna use coconut cream or you don't like coconut cream, this Califia or really any brand of coconut milk does really well in coffee as well. So there's our coconut. We'll add our cube in there. And then I'm gonna hit it with the frother and kind of mix this all together. And the color of that is not quite as creamy looking as the heavy whipping cream but not quite as dark as just the uh, the water rehydrated. And that one I think is my favorite. Uh, everyone does their coffee just a little bit different. So I'll leave that up to you how you want to rehydrate. Uh, lots of potential, lots of possibilities here. So in the meantime, this is Retired at 40. Remember to live life simple. Happy coffee drinking. We'll catch you next week.